for most of us, it's not too late to learn how to read. I'm not talking about reading what's on paper. I'm talking about um, reading a room, reading the people in the room, reading the, the temperature, what's going on, group dynamics, reading a God moment. Yeah. As a former teacher, teaching children to read required preparation, reading readiness, we called it. There were just some things that children had to come ready to do, like being excited about reading. Well, we learned that usually that desire and excitement came because someone took the time to read to them. Also, they had to be able to identify the alphabet and the sounds that were aligned and attached to the alphabet. Children also had to have what we call picture sense. They could tell you what was going on in a picture, tell a story. They could also retell a story, all right? Uh, they had good listening comprehension. That evolved over time into a, a way of thinking. And gradually, basic thinking evolved to critical thinking. Well, just like reading readiness for reading what's on paper, a billboard, a cartoon, what have you, is real. Reading situations is real also. And sometimes we have to learn and relearn how to read because we, we fail. We fail in acknowledging what's really going on for different reasons, different reasons. Uh, maybe we didn't follow our instinct, our intuition. Uh, maybe we overthought something. We wanted to give someone or something the benefit of the doubt, whatever. But the truth of the matter is we have to be taught, even as adults and children, how to trust our instincts. For instance, there are micro expressions. Just looking at someone's facial expression can tell us a lot. And we need to trust our instincts with those looks. <laughs> we may laugh, but we know what we are feeling and we know what we are experiencing when we see certain looks. When you and I pay attention to our own habits, our triggers, um, what's happening in our surroundings, patterns in our lives, uh, noticing opportunities, for instance, to serve, noticing that whenever this happens and that happens, it lines up with God's word, which means we have to know the word, but noticing an alignment with God's word and events in our lives. We see God moments. We're reading God moments. We've allowed ourselves to be vigilant, attentive, alert. We're trusting what we see, and what we hear, and paying close attention. We are ready. We are ready to read a room, ready to read a situation. These are just some things that we do almost every day, and we don't even think much of them, but they are ways that prepare us uh, to function wisely and not be socially awkward when we are in spaces um, that could cause us some discomfort. We can re-regulate ourselves, you know, and um, take the moment for what it is, be present in the moment, capitalize on the moment, and adapt and adjust ourselves accordingly. Yeah, reading the room, reading people, reading God moments, we have the capacity and the capability to do all of that. Look, with... Uh, patience uh, and practice, you and I can get over the feeling of discomfort, uh, inept ineptness, um, awkwardness, and uh, be on our way of evolving into individuals who feel comfortable reading their own emotions, uh, being mindful, absolutely mindful, and reading people, whether they're one-on-one -on -one with a person, reading a room where there are there is a group, where there's uh, group dynamics going on and you're, you're reading what's going on with individuals, multiple people. 
yeah, we can do that. And we can feel comfortable reading what God is doing even in our lives at some point. All right. So just give yourself a break, <laughs> practice and um, feel comfortable in your own skin and trusting your intuition. And I think uh, second guessing yourself uh, should be something that you dismiss, let go of. All right. As you move forward and just learn to adjust to trusting your gut and being confident, which takes practice because different spaces sometimes require another level of confidence in us as well. So it's a lot of moving parts to this, but I just wanted to share um, a framework for you to look at when you're thinking about your discomfort, <laughs> when you're in spaces and you're wondering, how come I didn't read that? How come I didn't see that? I get that a lot. I've been there and I still go there sometimes. I wonder, how come I didn't see that? How come I didn't trust what I did see? And um, my clients have those conversations with me as well. So don't beat yourself up too much. All right. But practice. All right. Practice adjusting, aligning and trusting your intuition first. That will take you and I a long way. And as we move along, we're just evolving from the basics to a higher level of being attentive and mindful of what's happening in us and around us. You can do this. You really can. For one-on-one -on -one sessions with me here at Evolve for Life, log on to www.stephanieersolomon.com and book a session today.